This time I'm going to ask that we bring the microphone up and we are going to have a very special opportunity to hear from some of our own fellow parishioners. Uh, we have two of our parish council members that are going to come up to us and talk to us from their own heart, from their own mind, from their own understandings uh, about our church and why they are here and why they give. So without further ado, I'd love to ask Eleni Ackerman, oh, I'm sorry, John Steffos, Eleni Ackerman and Meredith, so three. Very good. Ooh, a holy trinity. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> ah, what a blessing. Thank God. And um, these wonderful, brave people, because it's not easy to stand up here, is it? I have my note cards. You have your note cards. So uh, let's give them our undivided attention. And thank you again for taking the time to prepare and to serve our church. A great blessing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for doing So John Meredith and I are all going to talk to you about stewardship today as we prepare for Stewardship Sunday next, next week. I will discuss the time and talent section and John and Meredith will do the treasure section. So as we all look at how we can contribute our time and talent, I wanted to share my personal story. I wanted to give back some of my time back to a community that has done so much for my family. I looked at the needs of the church and aligned them to my interests and my abilities to understand how best to give. Our church was and is blessed with an increasing number of visitors and growth as people continue to make Austin their home. Many, including Father, saw the need to retain the feel and intimacy of a small church despite our growth. I chose to formalize a welcoming committee to follow up with the visitors that Father acknowledges every Sunday. We wanted for people to feel and experience a sincere connection and understand how we could help them learn more about our parish. What started out to be a task has resulted in an incredibly rewarding experience for myself and for the church. I want to share with you a couple of examples. One of the first people to complete a visitor card which I instituted was in the process of moving to Austin. She ended up joining the welcoming committee. Who could better empathize with those new to Austin and new to our parish? She leveraged her experience to help others integrate into both. Another person I met while on the committee asked that I be their sponsor for their chrismation. The reason they provided was I was one of the first people they got to know when they visited the church. I felt so honored. This was the first Orthodox chrismation I had ever experienced. Another couple attended our recent Greek festival this year, and they went on a church tour. They happened to be in search of a new church, they liked what they saw, they came back to attend several liturgies, and they are now stewards in our parish. The, there are so many people with life stories that have led them to our church. Had I not been tuned in to welcoming visitors, I would not have formed such connections. It's amazing the talent you find in yourself when you choose to give your time. As our parish continues to grow, we need more of us to help our parish be a better church. As part of the ministries, we need both doers and leaders. We have two requests of you today. The first is to prayerfully complete the time and talent section of the stewardship form. Our ministry leads will reach out to you to see how you can best help. We also have several leadership roles that are in need of time and talent. 
As our parish continues to grow, we need better infrastructure. Please review these roles, see how they align with your interests, and they will be posted in next week's bulletin. I believe we can all find a rewarding experience in giving back to our church. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Meredith Stephos, and this is my husband, John. If you'd told me five years ago that I would be standing here in front of an Orthodox Church community talking about stewardship, I probably would have laughed. While John grew up Greek Orthodox, I grew up in a Baptist church. And for most of our dating life, the Orthodox churches we attended in D.C. and in Boston didn't feel welcoming. Things felt foreign and exclusive. No one stopped to say good morning or get to know me. No one took the time to explain what was happening during the liturgy, why was it significant, or answer my questions about orthodoxy. And so for years, we compromised. One Sunday at a church where I felt comfortable, one Sunday at an Orthodox church where John felt comfortable. And we assumed we'd be alternating back and forth for the rest of our lives. We didn't think we'd find a church where we both felt like we fit and where we both felt at home. Then we moved to Austin. My first Sunday at Transfiguration, I walked in the door and Jack Gatlin greeted me with a huge hug. Father Vasilios had us stand up and introduce ourselves. And people actually came to find us and say hello at coffee hour. More and more families we met were like us, Greeks and non-Greeks, who all loved this church. For the first time, we both felt welcomed and invited to be fully part of a church community. Finding our place here opened up the door to learn about orthodoxy, and we fell in love with what we found, an ancient tradition grounded in symbolism and history and contemplation and filled with wonder and amazement at the infinite yet relational nature of God. This was a place where we could have discussions and ask questions and dive deeper in our faith a place people wanted to learn and grow with us. For this and for so many other reasons, transfiguration has become an anchor in our lives. It's where I was chrismated, and since joining this community, we've gotten engaged and then married. Father Vasilios even flew across the country to officiate our wedding. While we've been here, we've grown in our faith and in our relationship with each other, and we've been able to plan for a future as a part of the church community. And as we've, <laughs> and as we've grown, we've watched our church grow. Over the past three years, our church has been chrismated. We've seen Deacon Sal come and join our parish family. We've held our first Greek festival. And perhaps most importantly, we've seen the way our community has mobilized itself to prepare for the future through our expansion project. As we stand here, we look at the brightness and the increasing brightness of the light that we're shining from on top of this hill, both for our community and for the greater Austin community. Each one of us plays a role in keeping up that light. As Eleni mentioned, continuing our community's growth takes our time and our talent, as well as our funds. As we move into 2020, the church plans to continue to grow our commitment to each other by adding funding for our existing programs, offering cost of living increases to our clergy and our staff, and by continuing down our path for expansion in preparing for a future mortgage on our new building. As discussed during the last General Assembly, these initiatives will increase our need for funding by approximately 
and that's where we need all of your help. As I imagine many of you do, John and I sit down each year to plan our household budget. As you can imagine, this is quite an adventure being married to a finance professional. Every year, we've continued our commitment to make this church our philanthropic priority. It's the largest gift we give, and we've grown the size of our contribution every year as our salaries have grown. We are so excited about where this church is going, and we want to help our community get there. That's why this year we're committing to keep up with the church's growth and increase our pledge by 6% or more. We invite you to join us today. Reflect on how God is calling you and what you can contribute to help us reach the vision for our community's future. And we ask that you, in reflecting, prepare a stewardship card here, which you'll find in your bulletin today. Please send those back to the church over the next seven days so that they can be presented at Stewardship Sunday next week. Okay. Thank you all. I have an amazing group of people around me, don't I? Yeah, and I have all of you. Um, thank you so very, very much. That was such a beautiful message, and I am humbled to be your priest and to hear your reflections. And may we continue to be that family and keep that intimacy. May we also ask you to look within and to hear the voice of God calling you to help, maybe with young professionals, maybe to help with our Goyans, maybe to help in whatever way you can. Today we heard about the blind man who wanted to see not Jesus of Nazareth, but Jesus, the son of David, the Messiah. He was the only one who was able to see that with his heart and he wanted to see him with his own eyes and Jesus the son of David the Messiah our true God turned around to the blind man and gave him exactly what he wanted let us also look within I am definitely grateful this Thanksgiving weekend and thank you so very very much for all of your blessings your prayers and for continuing to be a family that welcomes people. God bless you, and thank you, Meredith, John, and Eleni, so very much. Amen. That was beautiful, man. They were awesome.